Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here. I hope you're doing an I hope you're having an excellent day. I'm on Discord. Milo Dude says, hey Michael, can we get some more dead content? Love the vids. Um, and I wrote back, dude, of course, I'll do it for you today. I'm in the mood. I was on Discord letting everybody know that Jack Roosh was live today in our first master class of Jack's uh, in our first Guitargate semester. It's going really, really well. And uh, I think I'm going to open it up to the next 25 people. For anybody that's interested, it's a six-month, five live stream a week, uh, like super intensive thing that you should expect a transformational change. If you're interested, there's a survey at the link in the description. It'll take you to the survey or it'll take you to the website, which will take you to the survey. And you can learn all about it. Um, and... Uh, when I open spots, I'll just kind of pick whoever's next in line. And so my, Milo says, okay, we got an underrated Dylan gem with masterful solos from Brent and Jer. This is stuck inside of Mobile with the Memphis Blues again. I don't think I've seen this one. Let's do it. <laughs> get this and then I'll explain it. basic funk here okay is a little bluesy thing in e e mixo if you will um i'll break it down but it, it moves so first this little lick e d b a g to g sharp open e sometimes it sounds like it's pushing from the two sometimes it sounds like it's a tug on the flat three point is your major minor thirds are kind of fungible right here. It's it's a blues. So as long as you're that booted on right that you're pushing through it, right? You're not it's not a static chord, so you're not worried about its function. This is a color, okay? So one flat seven five four three one. Then it switches into kind of like uh like an E major kind of vibe. We kind of we kind of leave mixo, if you will, because you get E major, C sharp minor, A and B. Now, typical Dylan kind of tune lends itself to Bobby singing. The changes really follow the vocals. You gotta kind of pay attention to where it's changing. 
but this little descending line, or sorry, before you get to the descending line, jumps up to the three chord. Super bitchin', right? G sharp minor. And then you get this walk down. And here's why I say we left mixolydian. E major, when you go to B, okay? The third, remember we're always third hunting. The third in the key of B, okay? That's the D sharp. That is the major seventh of E. So remember in our opening lick, we had E, D, hear that bluesiness already. Flat seven, five, four, three, one, right? So now we're one major seven. That's the third of D, or, or third of B. Then you walk down C sharp minor, there's your sixth chord, and then five, four, kind of hangs on four, and resolves to one. So just know that in the beginning part, you can D, it's very E mixo, it's very blues, right? But in this walk down, you better believe you're D sharpening to get that voice leading going down. Shakespeare, he's in the alley with his pointy shoes and bell. Speaking with some French girl who says she knows me well. And the five I would chord. send a message to find out if she's tough. But the post office has been stolen and the mailbox is locked. Oh! The key strikes. Stuck inside a mobile with the Memphis blues again. Now Mona, she tried to tell me, said stay away from the railroad line. She says, oh, the railroad man, drink up your blood like wine. And Love I that little, said, oh, I didn't know that. Little but Jerry, little again, rope dope in there. The she just smoked my eyelid and it punched my cigarette. Oh, mama. Love those little voice leading that right then. You hear Jerry kind of pushing around in there before the change gets there. I love it. Another verse. We buried him in the rocks. We do the bit. Now everyone still laughs about how badly they are shocked. Like it on. But me, I expected it to happen. Well, I knew we lost control. When he builds a fire on Main Street and they shot it full of holes. Great key fill. Feel, it's not tight feeling. Let's hear that bass walk down. Again, I don't know if anybody, I mean, Bobby's doing it, but it's not staccato like Phil. Listen to how sharp that. Right? It's so staccato. So if you're doing that with him, you really got to let him lead. Um, but just know that that's happening. Um, and so one of the things that so many bands do um, is, uh, I don't want to say incorrectly, but incorrectly, is if you have a really strong voice leading part happening, okay, one thing you don't want to do is this, just like, right? You want to stay out of that. You either match it, right and stay out of its way or you see like jerry's doing you know find some other part up here right that is just in a totally different zone if you want to stay with it you don't just read off the chord chart and say uh e uh e b c sharp b a b right that it's going to cause a lot of clashing Stuck 
Jerry jumps here. I love how he jumps at first. Catches it. Yeah, Bobby knows. So the senator, he come down here. All right. Let's get some of this. I wanted to watch the whole thing first. Love how it seemed like Jerry didn't quite land on the... But then he picks up on it, and then it, it they, I mean, they're so used to flying through the clouds together that they just, they hear it, they latch on to it, and then they move, right? Um, that was a cool moment coming out of there. Uh, my favorite part, though, is when he goes into that G-sharp minor, that three chord, you hear him jump the gun with his little run before he gets, before the chords get there. Um, I have a whole lesson on this somewhere in the ether. If you're on GuitarGate, you can go to the lessons and search for it, or here on YouTube, I think it's on GuitarGate, called Pushing and Pulling the Changes, meaning, yeah, our next chord's a G-sharp minor, but we're not there yet. But you know what? I'm just going to start in G-sharp minor, and then when the chord gets there, it resolves me, right? The other opposite of that is the chord just changed. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't change. And I take my time, but then when I get there, then I create the resolution that the band I already got into. Push, pull. Uh, Jerry does about as good as anybody I've ever seen do it, and this is a perfect example. I'll point it out. But let me give you some broad strokes of what's going on in this lead. <laughs> got this. That's not right. Yeah. So he's just going up. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is just major, right? We've stayed away from our seventh so far. Slid through it. You got, you got this, uh, so you got this E major pentatonic pedal steel bend, bending on the nine, planting your pinky on the fifth right there, bending up through the flat three into the major three, same as here, right? But then ending on that C sharp, why? Because that is the root of the C sharp minor chord that the band is playing over. That's the change. Remember, E major and C sharp minor are relative majors and minors, meaning that they contain all of the same notes. But when you're soloing over E, you accentuate the E's. And when you're soloing over C sharp, when your chord's in C sharp minor, you accentuate those roots. So same notes, different focus. So he's just then walking up chromatic to land on that C sharp. Walking up into the next spot. One, two, major third, fifth, sixth root. And again, when it goes to C sharp minor, then same notes, but here's your here's your funk. Fifth, root, flat seven, flat three, four. So that move there works because E's here, but also because C sharp minor's there. Now, right there, this is when our chord change goes to the five chord and hits a B. Watch him jump this. He's up here, jumps back into E, 
that ramble do do that now watch him I got it I'm lost that that so you're still all you're doing here is he's kind of running through E doing these super Jerry chromatic lines right but he knows, and he's gonna do this different every night. So all you note for note guys out there, just broad strokes. Just what are we shooting for? What's our target? Where do we land when we're coming out of the fog? Where do we stick it, right? You stick it, what is the note more than any other note that creates chord function? It's the third, okay? So when we get a new chord, especially a five chord, the strongest chord in diatonic harmony, if you shoot for the third and then land on the root, you sell it. So we're E all day, right? And when we get that five chord, we get that B, I want you to visualize. Here's E, D sharp, okay? This is now our fifth of our five chord, and there's B, our root of our five chord. So as, just as important it was to get this here. Right? And you get this. Really hear that five chord. So that's our target. So you're in here. And then you can resolve back up into it. Yeah, staying away from those Ds. He's really, interestingly enough, that my key takeaway here is that he's staying in E major pentatonic. You know, flourishing with the C sharp minor, right? Like that's his little color, but noticeably staying away from the sevenths. Remember, the difference between D and D sharp is the difference between or whether we're in mixo or whether we're in E major, right? It's whether we're playing the D sharp to sound out the five chord or not. So him staying away from that, anything that starts with the D is interesting. It means he's trying to keep a key centered focus, right? He's not doing a, a, a pure chord tone, track a note, track a note, track a note process, right? He's, uh, he's really keeping this uh, like E key centered and staying away from implying some other changes, right? Now watch, as soon as I say this, he's gonna hammer a D, but but that's an interesting thing to me. Yeah, this move here. Right here, band isn't there yet, but he starts this G sharp run. So what? So what do we have here? G sharp. Now, here's your root, here's your octave shape. For all you taking my lessons and courses in caged, here's how it goes. G sharps, okay? It's our three chord, okay, in the key of E. Roots, minor chord. Here's your pentatonic, which you're always safe. The pentatonic is safe because you remove the half steps. That's the point of a pentatonic scale, it's to remove the half steps. If you add the half steps in, you run the risk of causing clashes, okay? Especially if this is coming really quick and you're like, oh, what am I gonna do? The three chord, as you know, okay? If you start a three chord on its root, I'm really trying not to lose people, this is a mode, okay? Phrygian, it's the third mode of E major. You don't have to think about it that hard. You can literally just look at. You can look at E major, okay? Visualize it and start on G sharp, right? Right? Now, I don't know if that's what Jerry does, but the key difference here is you're gonna have an A, right? Instead of a A sharp. Let's see. I 
I think he's A-sharping. I think he's, I, it, it seems to me. I don't, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's A-sharping. So he is not, um, he's not playing like the mode of E major and staying in it. He's using that G-sharp minor as kind of like its own moment in time, right? We're playing, we're playing G sharp minor. I see the scale, doesn't matter if it fits or not. I'm not trying to overthink it. That's what I'm squeezing in there. It's kind of what I'm seeing. So you can clearly hear G sharp, right? shooting for this E major triad as he cycles down. You can uh, see it clear as day. And he grabs that top part. So the senator, he come down. Let me make sure this is still go. Here we go. Showing everyone his gun. Handing out free tickets to the wedding of his son. Then wouldn't it be my luck to be caught without a ticket and be discovered beneath the truck? Oh, mama, love that job. Can this really be the end? Be stuck inside a mobile with the Memphis blues again. Like that rape. So baffled when I asked him why he dressed with 20 pounds of headlines stapled to his chair. And he cursed me when I proved it to him. And I said, See, not even you can hide. <laughs> you see, you're just like me. I hope you're satisfied. Oh! Same thing, like with the lead. Uh, with the vocal notice how um uh, uh bobby he comes in before the band gets there all those little lead-ins before the bar comes i want you all th to think about this um as a general concept you don't have to get there until you want to right and you can get there before everyone else is ready it's when we're all finally here together then that's what time it is. But it's not that time until it's that time. You know what I'm saying? It it, 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 it doesn't matter if an instrument or voice or whatever. I just want you to start thinking, thinking about it that way. That there's all these moving parts. You can push and pull. And then when it's all together, it's bam. Then it's that one thing. But that it doesn't have to be this perfect way to get there. In fact, celebrating the imperfect is why we love it so much. Mama. I love that high part. Now the rain man gave it to you. Down a little bit. Look at Mickey back there. Then it said, jump right in. Yeah. The first was Texas medicine. The second was just real low gin. Right, coming up. Like a fool, I mixed them. And it strangled up my mind. Now people just get uglier, and I have no sense of time. Ah! Yes. What a great keyboard sense of time. What a great run. Check out what happens here, right? Uh, I'm not going to go note for note, but the point is, is that he leads in before we get here, and then he he's shooting for this E, and then he's matching fill as it goes down, this, right? But the, but he get this, you know, you get, wherever he comes from. But the point is, he's shooting for it, and then he's gonna match that descending line.
You know. Right? Something like that. Awesome. And then immediately, again, E, D sharp, but then to the E, D. Anybody, I don't know if there is anybody that says Jerry didn't know what he was doing, but it's just like, <laughs> I feel like before I got into this music, that's what people said. And now I'm just like, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Like, you could watch him. In a split second, he's like, oh, I'm going to shoot for this run where I get the D sharp. And then immediately when I get down to my next octave, I switch to the D because that's what time it is now. Like, it's so clear. I, I, to me, I just, I think the band has always gotten a bad rep because of the drugs and everything else. But, like, even in that haze, you have to remember, especially with Jerry, he's a bluegrass player. These are chord tone soloists, guys. Chord tone soloists, right? Meaning they are not strictly adhering to this is in the key of E, we play E, we phone it in, and then we call it a day. It is what are the core, what are the notes in the chords that I'm playing over? And that's my outline. That's the difference. That's why I preach triads, connecting triads. Uh, with melodies. That's why my whole preaching from the mountaintop thing that I've learned from this music, that's why it is that, right? It's why I fell in love with bluegrass music, because that is the way. That is the way. So even in like the craziest of crazy hazes, you still always see a commitment to chord tone playing and an extreme awareness of how the chord shapes are moving moment to moment. Moment to moment. Love how Bobby does that little whammy bar thing. You know that? Again, early. No one wrote this. Nice dynamic bring down too. You know how Perfect. We're rocking watch your walls for three. The Panamanian moon. So much to listen to. Early. The bricks they lay on Grand Street Where the neon madmen climb They all fall there so perfectly It all seems so well timed Here I sit so patiently Trying to find out what price You have to pay to get out I love that shot Going through all of these things twice Falsetto? Yeah! That's right, two times. I love it. Uh, who sent me this again? Oh, it's from Discord. Oh, this is from Milo Dude from the um, from the six month semester from the master classes. Um, Milo Dude, thank you very much. Uh, my key takeaways here are um, let's see, let's see. One, chord tone soloing, right? 
be aware for D or D sharping. So E mixo, E major, okay? Second thing, um, don't be afraid to push and pull the chord changes. It's so much fun to get there before everybody else arrives and to show up late. You don't always have to be on time. Like, yes, the chords should dictate what you're playing, but you don't have to get there all at the same time. It's like a party, right? It's good to be late. You know, it's usually not good to be early, but it's really fun in situations like this, right? You never get to do that. And just to, whether you're vocals or singing, just pull the rest of the band with you. That's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, one other thing I'll note about Jerry in particular is that um, perfect example right here. Now, again, I didn't learn it note for note. So all you note for note guys, just chill out. But when he jumps to that G sharp early and does that run, it's so fast that it, you don't have to get the exact mode that fits in the space, right? You could do the whole thing chromatic if you want. All you got to think is it's G sharp, it's minor, right? So be natural, okay? Like we're definitely B's in here. We're not, we're not B sharp, but it's definitely, okay? And I'm going to come in early. I'm going to push it with the sequence, and I'm going to land where? That's the question. I'm going to land where? So you get this. So just being aware of the overall concept that you're trying to achieve and where your target is, like where you get, where, what it takes to stick the landing, okay? And then just having fun with it and coming in and out of it. That's it, my friends. Um, I love you all. If you dig the vibe here, please hit subscribe. I hope this isn't your first time watching one of these videos, but if it is, welcome. Um, if you'd like to dive deeper into learning the neck like this, learning triads, chord tones, how to solo and how to improvise uh, and jam with the band and think about how to learn stuff like this step by step and practice it, I built a whole website for it. It's called GuitarGate. It's my life's work. And if you're curious about what I mentioned here in the beginning, the masterclass which just started, I will put a link to that in the description as well. Um, we Lyle Brewer is one of the teachers. Uh, and anybody that um, follows Neighbor, Lyle is an incredible uh, player, but he's also a Berkeley instructor. And so he knows it inside and out, but thrilled to have him um, along with uh, Jamie McLean, um, we got Guthrie Trap and Jack Roosh and myself doing live streams every week. It's a six month commitment and it's by invitation only. Um, there's a 25 person limit, but I'm thinking I'm going to add another 25 because it's. It, I think we have room for it. So that interests you. You can sign up for that. That's it. That's my little pitch. That's my little spiel. Um, just keep the guitar in your hands. Keep trying to get a little better every day. That's what I'm doing. And I hope this inspires you to do the same. Have a great day. Cheers.